Hi everyone, it's Wynn. Um, it is Saturday at about 11.15 Central Time, and uh, one of the hard things about being a commentator on the race is the, that there's 300 and something boats in the race, 3,000 and something people sailing the race, and many, many of you following the race that have an interest beyond you know, the, the, the boats that we are able to focus on. So I wanted to record a video here, and uh, what I wanted to do was actually kind of start from the back of the race and go through the three divisions. and look at the leaders in each section and end at the front of the race and the weather and stuff like that, a little different from how I normally do it. So what I have up here is I have the, uh, the um, Chicago Mac Trophy section, which is the smaller boats. Um, this is Big Sable Point. This is Little Sable Point. This is where all the storms were down here. They're sort of down actually at the bottom of the screen even, if I could put radar on here. And let's look at who's where. So we have a J109 here, TOA or TOA. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm sorry. They, um, uh, with Jim Mitchell's boat. I know Jim. And they're racing, instead of in the J1091 design section, they're racing in section seven. And they are leading section seven at the time. Again, all these results are unofficial and kind of estimated based on the handicapping system, if it's a handicap uh, fleet. So take these with a grain of salt, but at least it'll give you some idea. Uh, timeout is in the one design J109 section, and they're leading that one. And let's see, blue, fa blue flash we have in section eight. Uh, heading things up right now. Split decision and very competitive Benetou 36.7 section. Um, uh, lots of racing going there. J105's Gonzo's in the lead. Oh, let's go back here. Looks like Callist. No, sorry, it's the gray boat here. My bad. Uh, Noma ties in level 35. Section is leading uh, currently. And uh, meet in the T10 section, though. If I clicked on a bunch of boats around here, I bet you I'd find 30 other T10 sitting right around meet. That's a very, 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 very competitive section. Uh, Cynthia, the Morgan 41, is in section 9. And we've got back here Flying Buffalo in section 10. And you can see sort of the rest of the fleet dragging back here. And sort of our last boats are just north of Little Sable. Um, and the good news is, you know, I don't know if you're looking at the speeds as I went along. The speeds are really, really nice here. I mean, we're not talking 8, 9, 10 knots, but that's be a lot for the boats that are a little bit smaller here. But we are showing 6 or 7 knots solidly in these boats. Um, the winds they're experiencing are going to be a little bit, let's see, I just looked at the, I'll show you this in fact in a second. They're kind of out of the south. The interesting thing, you'll notice the boats are a lot of, they're either going this way or, for instance, this one right here is going this way. Um, they're on opposite jibes um, right now, some of them. And if you get inside of inside of this area right here, let me show it to you, uh, the area between the points, right, like this boat right here has, you actually have to say, hey, I can't keep going this away. Um, I can't keep sort of going on this jibe and into land. I have to jibe over and come out here because I need a clear point Betsy and line up for the Manitous later on. So watch for these guys that are inside of here to later on sort of, um, if the wind does not shift, to sort of jibe out and go uh, out here and then set themselves up for a shot down the Manitous is probably, which are just out of our picture right now. The Manitous are that way. Um, so again, that's a brief overview of the current situation of the trophy section. Let's take a quick look now. We're going to go, I'm going to do the cruising section next. And some of the boats we just talked about are in the cruising section, or, um, right, or the cruising division, excuse me. Um, so let's, uh, we can see we've spread way the heck out in the cruising um, division. Let me just, as a matter of fact, show you. So we've actually got our leaders on handicap basis in the cruising division um, all the way from north of the Manitous, sort of halfway between the Manitous and Gray's Reef, a couple of them back in the Manitous, but the fleet goes all the way back to, what is it, uh, almost Ludington, which is Big Sable Point. So the fleet is really, really stretched out. The main concentration of boats is coming around Point Betsy right now. We've gotten some tweets from this fleet. They are um, moving nicely, really. They're, again, you know, I, we see what appears to be the same kind of south wind, and you see the boats on opposite jibes, um, as I described earlier. Some of them are going this way, so sort of more uh, northeast direction. Direction, some of them more northwest direction, suggesting they're in kind of a southerly slash maybe a touch southwesterly, the breeze up there, um, which we'll see more of when we look at the bigger boats. I'm just zoom in on the leaders here. We have three sections. So Obsession is in cruising three. Uh, that's an Endeavor 42. They're just about to enter the Manitous, coming around a beautiful part of the race course right now. Uh, Intangible, Tom Falk, who I saw at the club the other night and is very, very successful in this race, is leading the cruising two section. Again, look at the speeds here, 6.9 knots. That's pretty good, right? 
And then up at the front, on a handicap basis, again, provisionally going 7.3 knots, 55.2 miles to go is uh, Roxy, a very well sailed uh, Tartan 4000. So very, very nice. And this is the Infinite Diversion up here, the Hand 63, um, who will almost certainly be the first cruising boat to the finish line. Um, they have about 43 miles to go at the pace they're going. That's about four or five hours, something like that. So with any luck, Joe and the gang will make it for the, um, for the porch party. Okay, so that's cruising. Let's now look at the Mac Cup section. And boats are going to be real spread out here too, right? So here's Il Mostro up here. I'm just going to start at the front with Il Mostro. They're going 17 knots. They're jiving back and forth. So uh, again, boats can't go straight down wind. So they're going this away. Uh, probably we'll see him not for too long here, jive back and aim for Gray's Reef is what they're probably going to do. They'll make a turn, change the side, the sails are on, and go for the entrance for Gray's Reef. And um, uh, they're going to need to, in pretty short order, to do that, I think. They're going 17 knots right now, 36 miles to go. Um, it is really a very, very fast race. Um, they are going to be done, you know, early afternoon at the rate that they're going, which is which is quite 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 fast uh, i'm holding out if conditions hold up that they're gonna that they're gonna challenge the record i don't think so at this point based on what i'm seeing here in the straits but if the wind builds a little bit more and continues to build out of the south it's it, nothing is impossible here so on a um on a corrected basis we have uh natalie j on a handicap basis in the lead in the turbo section um someone pointed out heartbreaker went outside of the manitous and they're doing pretty well uh, out here outside of the Manitou's, uh, another Transpac 52, which I believe is the same thing as Natalie J. So they're, you know, in terms of, of uh, distance to go very close and must be close on a corrected time um, to the section win. This would be our section one leader here, which is uh, Denali squared. I think that's how they pronounce it. Um, a very, very fast, pretty boat. And uh, they have 67 miles to go. We've got sort of the rest of Section 1 stretched out back here along with some turbo boats. I think I saw back here. Um, and, and lots of racing left, guys. Just lots and lots of wind dying and building and so forth going on. So I'm just going to move back and highlight the rest of the crowns really quickly here. Uh, Norboy in the Fire 40 class. Uh, we've got Main Street, beautiful boat, Bill Shannon. Uh, Momentous in the J111 class. Now they're getting really close to shore here, right? Um, they're going to need to probably jive out in a minute to get get a, get away from the shore and sort of uh, maybe, you know, prevent a, a wind shatter from the land from getting them as they get over there. So that'd be very interesting for them. Um, let's see. We got a leader right here in Eagle, Sean O'Neill. I talked to Sean the other night at the club. They're doing great. Um, they're first in Section 5 on the race course right now with 110 miles to go, going seven knots. So they're 15, 18 hours out, somewhere in that range uh, at this rate. It's a big caveat at this rate. Um, we have Chico 2 in the uh, One Design 30. Uh, it's a One Design 35T. I'm sorry, it's in Section 4. And pulling back a little bit, we've got here's three more leaders here. We've got Spanker, Benetou 40.7 in a very competitive, very good fleet. Uh, Rogue, which is a Nelson Merrick 36 in Section 6. And we've got the J120 Section Hot Ticket uh, is leading that section. I, I think I have that right. I'm just going to zoom in a little, make sure. Yeah hot ticket. So, you know, I hope that's a helpful overview of the fleet, trying to mention some more boats and what's going on here. Oh, wait, just real quick. One thing. Let me, let me just click on multi-hull and click off the Mac Cup. And you can see the multi-hulls. Um, we've got three or four of them uh, back here, sort of between um, Big Sable Point and Point Betsy. But we have Arate, which has been flying. Uh, they turn the corner here at Gray's Reef and slow down from 16 or 17 knots to 10 knots. And they don't look like they're going in the direct line here. So even though they have 15 miles to go, uh, I think they get about maybe, uh, I don't know, two hours, something like that. Hopefully something will change in the wind. It'll be faster than that, but as of right now, um, which a very, very impressive race. I have two quick uh, weather updates uh, for you guys. So this is a map of the current surface observations. And I just want to point out, as I was saying, you know, we've got southerly, maybe tending southeast down here winds, and we've got sort of more southwesterly winds up here, which is telling me we probably get that warm front sitting somewhere right in there um, between the convergence of the two of them. Um, and you can see we've got, I thought this station was broken earlier. It's actually gusting to 20 knots up here on Beaver Island. And earlier we saw east winds at Mackinac. They're now out of the south, which if that continues or builds or if the southwesterly gets through there, 
we're talking much better conditions uh, for, for finishing what we have now. And then you can see this area where these southerly winds transition to more westerly, northwesterly winds. And that's our cold front right there working its way uh, towards the lake. So let's keep an eye on progress of the cold front that's still a couple hours away. We'll have a wind shift. Uh, hopefully we'll have a uh, continued good pressure behind it and the fleet's going to keep moving real well. Last bit of information I just wanted to show you. This is the current radar um, out of Gaylord, the Gaylord Weather Service office. And the uh, real severe stuff was uh, over Little Sable Point and it's just kind of clearing now uh, the lake, which is really, really good news. And the good, 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 good news is that if you look over uh, to the next weather, to the Green Bay Weather Service office, just a couple of little showers here and there, nothing um, organized that we're seeing upstream, at least at this point. Um, and that might be evidence of our cold front. I don't know if you guys can see that little batch of showers right there. Um, but that's where we are, uh, kind of a long overview, but I really wanted to talk more about many fleets. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I will catch up with everyone later on Twitter and on Facebook. Thanks. Bye.